Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Rob from Pro Rest Blog, and I'm back in action here with FMW's 5th Anniversary Show from 5-5-1994. Um, FMW ran an anniversary show pretty much every year, and it would usually feature a really big uh, gimmick match, and it would feature tons of different stars, usually with Onita in the main event. And uh, this one's really no different. Um, you know, they pretty much pull out all the stops, at least as much as they can for being a smaller company. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is their WrestleMania, their, their Tokyo Dome, and it is their biggest show of the year. Um, a lot of cool stuff here. You get a really nice mix, and uh, we'll uh, jump right into it, and I'll tell you how it was. All right, so the first match was uh, Tetsuhiro Kuroda versus uh, Gosaku Gosho Gowara. I, I really can't pronounce his name. It's quite long and weird for Japanese standards. And um, it wasn't really anything special. Uh, you know, both are pretty young rookies. And uh, they were both awkward. They blew stuff. And uh, neither really looked that great. But uh, that's a rookie match, you know. You got to you gotta learn somehow. And um, Kuroda ended up winning this one with uh, a really deep uh, single leg Boston Crab that looked pretty nasty. And uh, only a few minutes were shown here. Didn't miss anything. Next up, we had some uh, Mishinoku Pro versus FMW action. We had uh, Battle Ranger Z, Koji Nakagawa, and Masato Tanaka versus the Great Sasuke, Hanzo Nakajima, and Shiryu. Um, yeah, this was, uh, when I first got this tape many, many years ago, this was like my favorite match on the tape. Uh, you know, it's a really cool match. Um, it's totally clipped up, so it looks a lot better than it probably was, but... The clips they sh shown were all really good, and like ECW, it made you just want to see the whole match. Um, there was just a ton of fun stuff. Uh, Shiru was really awesome here. He was flying all over the place. He did all kinds of flips, and he just looked like a step above everyone else. Um, you know, he did some cool escapes. He even did a, like a black man from Lucha Libre spot. Literally, there was a guy named Black Man, in case you're wondering. And uh, he just looked like a beast. Um, Sasuke was really good here, too. He did a nice Asai. He did his Flying Space Tiger Drop. And the usual Sasuke stuff, and I really like that. Um, one really cool spot was uh, Shiru did a dive to the outside of Tope Con Hilo. And uh, he went through the ropes, and he ended up... Like, he went so far through, and the guy didn't catch him, so it was kind of like, I don't even know, it was like a capo kick off of a dive, and it was pretty cool. Uh, I don't think it's how it meant to be, but uh, it was pretty good, and uh, that's such a hard dive to hit, so I, I really do love to see that. So dangerous, too. Um, Shearer also hit a really big and nice moonsault here, and um, Sasuke stretched one of the dudes out with a really a nasty octopus stretch. Um, the finish came with a uh, battle ranger. He tried to hit like a top rope, um, Hurricane Rana, and it, uh, it kind of got turned into a power bomb by H Hanzo Nakajima. And I don't know what happened, but it was definitely botched and, um, they screwed up the pin because, uh, Hanzo kicked out. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know what happened here, but, uh, it was a botch, but, uh, I still liked it. It was a good match. There were tons of cool stuff and everyone just looked cool. I mean, you have Power Rangers here, ninjas, you got, you know, all kinds, uh, you got a samurai dude, you know, uh, this is pro wrestling to me <laughs> and I love it. Uh, that, that's one of the big reasons I love, uh, you know, FMW and Mr. Noku Pro. And, um, you know, I gave it three and a half stars because I loved it and it was a ton of fun. Next up, we had some FMW versus LOPW action with uh, Combat Toyota, Crusher Matamori, and Shark Tsuchiya versus uh, Norio Tateno, Eagle Sawai, and Mizuki Endo. Um, yeah, this is just FMW, LLPW action. Uh, all the groups work together around this time, which is how you got Dream Slam, Big Egg, and all those types of shows. And, uh, this was really no different. Um, I'd be, I think I'd be honest in saying the women's team probably had the worst haircuts of all time here with uh, not a lot of lookers, but, uh, um, Toyota's hair is really cool. It's like, uh, it's like a leopard or something in the back, and I've never seen anyone else do it. Um, speaking of Toyota, she was pretty awesome here. She, uh, she had a top rope dive to the outside and she was just on, she was totally carrying this and, um, you know, at least on her side and on the women's side, um, you know, this was pretty much the, uh, the Norio Tateno show. She was biting, doing heel tactics and, uh, just being pretty wild and crazy. And <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, she really brought some spunk to the mats and she made it a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, it was good stuff and it was definitely better than it should have been because it really should have been a stinker. But, uh, you know, at least from the clips, it looked like it wasn't. So, uh, hey, kudos to him for that. Um, Crusher got the win here when she uh, did a top rope uh, choke slam onto Endo, which uh, looked pretty rough. So, um, yeah. 
after the match, they um they all kind of got into it again. Uh, <laughs> to Tano and Crusher argued, and um, Eagle Sawai I think went at it with uh, Shark. So uh, we had a nice little pull apart that probably built to something else, but probably never gonna see it. And so I can't really comment too far. But uh, good stuff, you know. Next up, we had uh, Sambo Asako and Mr. Ganosuke versus Goro Surumi and Hideki Hosaka. Um, man, Sambo is just absolutely huge. I mean, he is just a fat dude. Uh, I kind of feel bad for him because you could just tell it's way too much weight on him. Uh, Ganosuke still wasn't really in his awesome mode as he would be later, but uh, he was definitely along the way here. So, you know, um, good stuff. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, this wasn't anything great. Uh, you look at the names involved and, you know, it wasn't going to be super awesome, but, uh, you know, it was, um, it was, fu it was okay for what it was, I suppose. Uh, Sambo, despite being pretty fat, he, he was actually really good here. He did a nice dive and he moved pretty quick and I, I was, uh, generally surprised by it. Um, Goro, you'll see him in like old, uh, old Japan and some other stuff. He, uh, he's just kind of like this heavier dude that had this crazy fro and he looks like, he looks totally like a pro wrestler. <laughs> I always appreciate that. And he was just all heel here. Uh, you know, they choked Sambo and they did their heel tactics and really not too much else here. And, um, yeah, Ganosuke ended up getting the win here with the Ganosuke clutch and it was all clipped. Um, yeah, so As Asaka was the really only highlight here. Next up, we had a kickboxer versus wrestler mix match. Um, it was uh, Katsuji Ueda versus uh, Katsutoshi Niyama. I don't know anything about either of these dudes. Um, I've seen Niyama. I, I've seen. Uh, I've seen one of them. I, I don't even know who's who, to be honest. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen Niyama a bunch of times, and uh, he's just like your shoot dude. And um, I really don't know what this was. I can't tell if it was a work or a shoot. So. Um, you know, if it was a work, it wasn't a good work. And if it was a shoot, it also wasn't a good shoot. So I really don't know. Um, highlights here were, uh, were Niyama hitting a really nice uh, capture suplex on Ueda. And um, Ueda threw some pretty good shots. So that's the part where I wasn't sure about the shoot part. Because he did belt him pretty good right in the head. And um, Ueda ended up winning here despite being like a 45-year-old kickboxer with a knockout blow on uh, Niyama. Um I guess I don't know whether this was a shoot or work because it doesn't make sense anyway. But uh, the less said about this one, the better. Next up, we had Sabu. Yes, that's Sabu. And Damien Triple Six versus Dr. Luther and Yone Genjin. Um, yeah, Damien always worked comedy in FMW, and it was pretty great. He, j he just did impersonations of people, and that's what he did here. And I was it was uh, pretty funny for sure. Um, you know Sabu. He's nuts, and he was absolutely, like, totally intent on destroying his body here. Um, he did a ton of stupid stuff. Uh, he did like a dive. He did a, he got on a chair and he used that to lift himself and go over the top rope on a clothesline. And he totally crashed and burned and just took a nasty bump on the outside. Um, he did this Damien's doing Ricky Choshu and Onita impressions. And, uh, he also did a, um, Hakushi impression. He, uh, he walked the ropes and that was pretty cool. Um, Sabu, Tried to do a 450, a springboard 450 onto a table on the outside, and it didn't work. He, uh, it ended up being like a 360 foot stomp, and, uh, Sabu took a hard fall, and, uh, um, Genjin took basically a 360 foot stomp, so that didn't look very fun either. The table did not give it all, and, um, you know, Sabu wasn't cool with that. Um, Sabu at this time was doing a gimmick where he had to break a table after each match. So after the match, he tried to break the table. First time, he missed and hurt his knee because he smacked it super hard. And you'd think he'd say, you know what, I'm 0 for 2 on this table, let me give up. But not Sabu. No, Sabu does not do that. Sabu tried again, and he finally broke the table, and he got stuck this time. He had to get help on it, and it looked like it really hurt. So uh, it was stupid, and it made him look like a fool. So uh, well done, Sabu. Uh, Damien got the win here with a great Muda style moonsault over Genjin, and uh, Damien was fun. Uh, Sebu was a total train wreck, and yeah, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of train wrecks, we next had an FMW versus All Japan Women's match. It was uh, for the WWA World Women's and Independent World um, Women's Double Title, and uh, the match was uh, Megumi Kudo versus Yumiko Hota. Uh, yeah, Kudo was still kind of trying to figure it out here, and she really wasn't very good at all. And you guys know Hoda from my previous reviews. Um, 
you know, if you want someone who's just going to stiff people and really add absolutely nothing in any type of match that isn't like a Hoss battle, then uh, Hoda's your girl. And uh, that's really what it was. And I, I like Hoda. She's an extremely nice person in person. And uh, she's very sweet and nice. But, uh, you know, she's a bit selfish in the ring. Um, yeah, Kudo tried here and she just failed. She botched a ton of moves and Hoda made her pay for it. Um, after one of the botch botches, she just like stomped her head in. And um, Hada also uh, power. She also power drived her like right on her head, which looked like it really sucked. And um, just lots of kicks to the head. Um, we got a small portion where Kudo fired up that I like because she threw a bunch of elbows that looked nasty. And um, she then went to the top and she got totally uh, call. Uh, she got totally called here as uh, she went to do like some type of I don't know like a frog splash. And Hoda put her feet up and she literally just like pushed up with like an up kick and uh it was like right in her face and it looked absolutely nasty um harder then hit it she then hit um a capture german suplex uh, and um after that uh kudo got the win when she reversed the power bomb so um that was it uh the, the curl got into it near the end but there was way too much watching and it just didn't work visually um kudo's just way too small and hoda's just way too big so uh, i didn't like it at all and it was really disappointing we next had an FMW versus WAR match. We had Big Titan, the Gladiator, Mike Awesome, Ricky Fuji, and uh, they went against uh, Hiromichi Fuyuki, Jado, and Ghetto. Um, Fuyuki was like super over here. The crowd just got into everything he did. Uh, they booed him like crazy, and he was just so good at working the crowd. You know, um, I haven't seen a lot of Fuyuki, but. The man knows how to heal it up, and he knows how to get the crowd involved. Like he does have like a crazy wild charisma to it, and I do like it. I'm, I'm starting to appreciate him after seeing this one. So about this one, um, this was just a giant long squash. Uh, the big Americans just literally destroyed Jado and Ghetto. I feel really bad because uh, Jado and Ghetto totally earned their pay and some here. Um, they sold big, and they really just took a whooping. Uh, awesome did this awesome. Uh, Tope over the top rope. He took out both men. That was so sweet. Um, what was it? Uh, Titan. He did uh, on uh, Jado. He did like uh, this one suplex. I can't think of the name, but he um, he had him in like an abdominal stretch, and he just threw him over top. And the visual was super great, as you can check out on my blog. He really just threw him overhead. Um, awesome. Also hit this power this uh, power driver on Ghetto. That was so nasty. He got major air on it and just drove him straight on his head, and it had to suck. Um, they teased some dissension here with a uh, Titan and Gladiator, and uh, Gladiator um, also hit a really super sweet frog splash. I mean, he got major error, and he just looked like Spider-Man or something off the top rope. And um, Awesome ended up getting the pin here over Ghetto after two power bombs. Um, after the match, uh, they had a weird fight between the um, you know the Americans and Fuji, and um, I think uh, Awesome ended up knocking out Fuji with a clothesline. And uh, they just all argued any left, and I guess we're getting a feud off of that one. Um, it was just a long squash. Um, I thought it was fun, though, because <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Awesome looked awesome, as he always does. And, um, you know, I gave it a three-star rating, so I did enjoy it. And uh, it was pretty fun for what it was. Next up, we had a Legends match. We had uh, Terry Funk versus the Sheik, the original Sheik, not the Iron Sheik. Um yeah, Terry Funk was kind of, he'd come in from time to time for FMW, and uh, the Sheik was like a regular in FMW, uh, even though he's like 100 years old at this point, it still worked. Um, I made the joke here that this was probably one of the few matches where <laughs> Terry Funk is not the oldest dude in the match, because Sheik had to be a good 10 years older than him at this point. Um, you know, Sheik's limited, so they really just did pencils and forks to the head and bleeding and, you know, some punches and stuff, but it worked. Um, they kept it short enough, and they, you know, I'm only saying this once instead of weekly, so it worked for me. Um, you know, it was a fun brawl, but both dudes bled. Um, it looked really violent, and Terry Funk, dude, he is the master of selling. Funk was just so awesome here. He, he really hammed it up, and he just made the Sheik look like this, you know, super hard individual and terry looked like he was dying he had blood all over the place you know he got choked to death and man that no one sells like the funker dude i don't know how he does it but it's just him he uh i don't know if it's because of his hair and he just looks so old but <laughs> he made it work and um you know the chic the chic work with it too uh they um they uh they, they lit terry's leg and knee on fire 
And um, you could hear them call the spot, as you could in the Mike Awesome match. There was a lot of spots where you could hear them being called. I guess this is due to the camera work, but you could hear him yell, on your knee, on your knee, and Funk still gets it on his leg. So <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But, uh, yeah, Funk got burned. He got bl he got busted open. It, it was quite the performance, man. And um, Terry ended up winning in this really odd finish. I have no idea what happened. It looked like... He grabbed, like, a piece of wood or fire or something, and he threw it in the Sheik's face, and the ref started counting for a knockout. So, Terry won by knockout somehow. I don't know how, but this was quite the spectacle, and I did enjoy it. Um, you know, this is a lot of fun pro wrestling. And after the match, Terry got into it with Sabu, and he did a nice moonsault, which was pretty cool. And he also grabbed, like, some bamboo tree or something, and he started swinging it at nothing, and then he tripped over the railing and fell. So, uh... There's Terry Funk. And Terry still wasn't done for the night as he then climbed onto uh, an outfield fence because this took place in a baseball field. And he like posed with the crowd and climbed up there all bloody and out of his mind. So, uh, Terry, we love you, man. You're the, you're the man. <laughs> Next up, we had um, a World Brass Knuckles uh, Tag Team Title Street Fight. We had uh, Mr. Pogo and Hisakatsu Oya versus uh, Tarzan Goto and Mitsuhiro Matsunaga, Mr. Danger. Um, I don't know like really what the storyline here was. I was trying to figure it out in my head, but it, I just could not do it because Pogo and um, you know Pogo and Matsunaga were kind of were kind of wing guys, and Oya and Tarzan Goto really weren't. So I don't know what happened here. Um, this match had some good points, but it just went way too long. It really dragged, and it was like 60 minutes or whatever, and it felt like 30 or 40, just way too much. And the match structure didn't make sense at all. They started out with a wild brawl, then they went back to a normal match, then they just had a normal match with weapons, so... I don't know. I didn't really get it. Um, but you know what you're getting here. There were a million chair shots. Pogo used the sickle on Goto, and, um, you know, and on uh, Matsunaga's knee. And uh, I really like Pogo selling here. Like, Pogo did a ton of selling, and it was actually really good. It's like, dude, why don't you oversell? Because I like to see it. He's actually really good at it, and he looks, you know, he was moving here too. So, I mean, it was it was pretty good job by Pogo. I mean, I was totally impressed, and I'm usually not a big Pogo fan. And um, Goto brought out a glass beer bottle, and he started stabbing Pogo in the head with it. And, of course, it was a Pogo match, so he had to get a fireball. And he lit Matsunaga uh, up with... Um, he blew some fire right on his back for the big spa of the night. And um, Oya got the win soon after. Um, like I said, it went too long. And I think could have been good if it was under 10 minutes. And it made a little bit more sense. But, you know, uh, I, I guess it wasn't that bad, all things considered. Goto also uh, got his ear all bloody up here. So uh, you don't see that spot too much. So that was interesting. All right. Hey, it's main event time. Um, we had uh, Atsushi Onida versus uh, Jenichiro Tenryu. Um, okay, the gimmicks for this one, it was a no-rope explosive barbed wire cage deathmatch. You got all that? Um, basically just a cage with no ropes and uh, explosives on the side. Um, there was no time bomb here, which I was kind of disappointed in. I know that sounds absolutely insane out of context, but um, the time bombs are kind of fun because they start a countdown for them and they light off um, signals, so you know it's coming and it really builds to the moment, but um, you know, this is what it was. Um, so, uh, to talk about this, um, Tenru and Onida ha do have a little bit of a history together. Uh, they were both in All Japan in the eight 70s and 80s together. Um, Onida was a junior heavyweight, while Tenru was a heavyweight. And um, Onida had to retire in the early 80s due to his knee. And, um, you know, meanwhile, Tenru stayed along until about the late until about uh, 90, and then he joined up with Super World Sports and became their ace, and they closed, then he formed War and did some New Japan. And um, meanwhile, Onita, you know, around the late 80s, he started FMW up. So, um, you know, these two have the sa same background as they were both students of Baba, and, uh, you know, they work for the same promotion. So it did have a little bit of history to it, which was cool. And um, to lead up to this, they had a war match, which I did review previously. And it was um, Ashurahara and uh, Tenru versus Onida and Goto. They showed some clips of it, which was nice. And, um, you know, Onida got the win here over Tenru with a power bomb. So um, that was pretty cool. It was a lot of heat for it, but I really didn't like it. Um, I might end up watching this again just to see, but I wasn't really that impressed by it um, when I had watched it. So, um, apparently, 
when the crowd saw that Onita Pintenru lost some of the interest in the match because everyone figured that Tenru would get his win back in the main event of this FMW show. So supposedly ticket sales were like really bad. So what ended up happening was Onita added a stipulation where if he lost, he would retire. So uh, um, he wouldn't retire immediately, but in the future he would retire soon, if that makes any sense. So um, yeah, they did that. So they showed some clips from the press conference and um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this uh, they uh, they showed the full entrances here, and it, it looked like a really, you know, it was just a really cool scene because it's night out, you know, you have this big explosive, you know, uh, cage going on, and you know, uh, you could tell both men were kind of scared and you know didn't know what was happening. Um, the crowd was loud, and it was just so so many cool visuals. It looked like they were both in a war zone, and they pretty much were. I mean, you got explosives and barbed wire. Uh, <laughs> that that is war, pretty much. You know, as you describe it. And this match, I mean, just above all, just had a big match feel. Like you knew something serious was about to go down, and you knew this was going to be just a real fight. And that's really what it was here. They started off uh, teasing, you know, some different cage spots, of course, and just doing basic stuff, which, uh, you know, totally cool. That's what you do. Um, they both kind of worked the headlock for a bit, so they kept it simple. And Onita tried to ground Tenru, you know, so that he wouldn't get thrown into the cage. Um, really, this was mostly the Tenru show. I mean, he just destroyed Onita almost the whole way. You know, he kicked him in the face, he slapped him and punched him, and Onita didn't have a lot to hit back with. He hit some headlocks and he got a couple power bombs in, but that was really it. I mean, this was this was a giant Tenru scratch, which which was really surprising. But I guess Onita had to do that to get Tenru to work this match. So um, yeah, I mean, they had a couple of cage spots. Uh, Onita got thrown into it uh, the first time he got thrown in. He he did a really good sell of it, and the cameras really just made this. I mean, they caught all of this so perfect, especially Onita and. You know, um, Onita might not have the moves like a Masawa or a Mudo, but this dude can work. I mean, he is, he was so awesome here just as a worker. I mean, he didn't do anything super big, but he sold it for everything it was worth. And it, it was really just like out of a movie. I mean, I was totally impressed. I mean, he, he did a great job here and, um, it was good stuff. Um, but yeah, it was mostly just Onita getting thrown in the cage and trying to fight it off. And uh, you, Onita just sold it like, you know, he was just done here and trying to survive. And that's really what it was. Um, Tenru just kicked him in the face the whole time. And Tenru even went to the cage once, which was cool. Um, it wasn't as good, but, uh, you know, he did do some selling. Uh, Onita hit a couple pow power bombs on him and uh, some good shots there. And um, they closed it out with uh, with um, Onita diving at Tenru and Tenru grabbing him by the hair like a sumo pole and throwing him right into the cage. And after that, um, it was pretty much done there. Um, uh, you know, uh, Tenru threw him in again for like his third or fourth dive into the cage. And that was pretty much it. Um, he power bombed Onita and uh, that was it. Um, what can I say? Excellent match. Uh, just had a big fight war feel. You felt something was at stake here. Huge crowd. And this may be like the greatest backdrop ever for a wrestling show. Um, you know, it, it just, the scenes were just insane here and so many good visuals and spots. And, um, I just love this match. You know, it was a simple wrestling match and it would have been good even without the cage. So, um, I think that's what really made it, you know, they really built up the cage spots well, and it was a good match with some cage spots with it to add it. And it was just very well done and definitely a match of the year candidate for 1994. And, um, I'd have to look into it, um, see what else all Japan did. All Japan women did that year, but, um, you know, definitely an awesome match. I gave it four and a half stars and, uh, you know, the crowd was into it and, Onita, after the match, really sold it well. He had to be carried out. He fell a couple of times. And um, even he didn't even do his usual post-match interview. He, he said a couple of words, but he was just done on the in the back with all these photographers watching. And um, he also had to be taken to the ambulance after, and the crowd followed him out there. So the crowd was all cheering along and yelling for him. And it was just a chaotic scene as Onita got carted away to close the show. Definitely a classic main event, though, and uh, one of my favorite matches. Um, I, I really love this one, and this is one I'll just always love. Um, I think it's just great pro wrestling, and, you know, it's just something something you don't see every day. So, overall, um, I thought the show had a little bit of everything, and it had something for everyone. You had some comedy with Damien. You had lots of flying with the M-Pro guys. You had, um, you had the women, you know, on there, and you had the legends on there with Terry Funk and uh, chic and uh you had your big dudes with mike awesome and of course you had lots of violence and blood so this had something for everyone you know um it was a really good show 
I, I really loved it, and I, I think, um, yeah, I, I really do recommend checking it out. The main events must see. Um, Terry Funk was great, and the Michinoku Pro highlights were pretty awesome. So I, I totally recommend it, and um, hey, it's FMW. This is uh, FMW at its best, and it was uh, good stuff. So um, thank you, everyone, for listening, and I apologize if it went a bit long, but it's a long show. So, um, you know, um, stay tuned for more, and um, if you want to see this review with all kinds of cool pictures and GIFs, got to check it out at www.progressblog.blogspot.com. All right, this is Rob from Progress Blog signing out here. To see pics and GIFs from this show and uh, for more um, analysis, check out www.progressblog.blogspot.com. Thank you.